Even if you're comfortable with calculus, you might have a tough time evaluating this derivative. When we look at the graph of this function, it's smooth continuous, we wouldn't expect any problems. Let's try to compute this derivative the way we normally would. Since there's a variable in the exponent, we'll use logarithmic differentiation. That is, we take the natural logarithm of both sides so that we can take advantage of those properties of logarithms and drop that exponent down front. We've changed our derivative into a product rule inside an implicit differentiation problem. Take the derivative of both sides of this equation, remembering how we differentiate logarithmic functions. On the right, the derivative of x is 1 multiplied by the second function, plus x times the derivative of this logarithmic function. Remember the derivative of sine is cosine. Now we can solve for what we want. We can solve for f prime of x by multiplying both sides by f of x and we knew what f of x was, that was just the original function. We've taken this derivative, but as soon as we try to answer the question by evaluating at 3 pi over 2, we'll see the issue. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, and uh-oh, we're trying to take the natural log of 0, which is undefined. This is the downfall of logarithmic differentiation. What should we do? Let's just turn to the definition of the derivative. This is typically how calculus students first learn to take derivatives, quote, the long way, and afterwards just switch to using the shortcut methods like logarithmic differentiation. But since that didn't work, we're sort of left to the definition. Let's substitute our function and our a value of 3 pi over 2 into this. And quickly we saw that 3 pi over 2 making things 0 for that second term. And so we're left with this clunky limit to solve. Now the plus 3 pi over 2 inside the sine function should make you think of some of those trig identities. And in fact, sine of 3 pi over 2 plus h is equal to negative cosine of h. Now we have to get a little creative. Let's look at that numerator with the base in absolute value. Since it's an absolute value, we can say it's at least 0, and notice that we're getting very close to h equaling 0. We're taking the limit as h goes to 0. As h goes towards 0, cosine of h goes towards 1, and 1 minus 1 gets very, very small, close to 0. So we have a small number close to 0 raised to an exponent that's going to make it smaller. If that exponent is making our quantity smaller for h values close to zero, we can bound it above without that exponent. This inequality holds true for small non-zero h. And this is the trick. We have this inequality with our limits, and what we have here is exactly the limit definition of the derivative of negative cosine. If we wanted to take the derivative of negative cosine of x at x equals zero, using the limit definition, this would be our setup. Minus cosine of h plus zero, minus minus cosine of zero, which is one. Fortunately, we know what the derivative of minus cosine x is. It's sine x, substitute in zero, sine of zero is zero. And so we have the squeeze theorem. What we're interested in is simultaneously greater than and less than zero, it must be zero. This matches the graph of the function at 3 pi over 2 since it looks like a horizontal tangent line. Now if you enjoy interesting derivatives, click the video on the screen right here. I'll see you in that one.